Well, welcome to uh, to Don't Skip Discovery. Um, we're going through a bunch of things that hopefully you will ask during Discovery in your projects to maximize your success. Um, it's a little weird that my laptop's at the back of the room, but uh, you know we'll make it through. So uh, what I'm going to do is quick intro, kind of who else here, who I am. Um, we're going to talk about sort of Discovery, what even is it? Uh, and then kind of three big questions, sort of talking about strategic alignment of a project for an organization, um, aligning you with who your audience is, and how are you going to measure what you're successful, and then we'll take a Q&A kind of at the end. Um, I'm hoping that we can treat this a little bit like an interactive session. So, um, I've got like a lot of questions. Basically, every slide's a question, so I'd love you to just you know, shout out anything that answers that question. Um, and sort of think about this um, as if we're in a discovery session and your website or one of your clients' websites is the project that's being discovered. So, who am I, who are you? Um, so, is anyone here part of a firm? How about, are you in-house at an organization? Okay, so more in-house and firm, cool. Um, who here is involved in discovery in your organization? Say a little over half. Um, does anyone here need discovery? You people, cool. Well, you tell me where I'm wrong. Um, so, I'm Sue Pashby. Uh, I'm the director of consulting and design hammer. We're a full service uh, digital strategy design development firm. Um, we're a 10 person organization, so we wear lots of hats. You can see a list of my many hats up top there. Um, so I kind of do a lot of our strategy stuff, a lot of our discovery, uh, usability, all that sort of stuff. So I have opinions about a variety of things. Um, so, kind of what we're talking about today is sort of uh, more of a mindset and process of making sure that your discovery process strategically aligns. Uh, your project with your organization, um, so you can be successful. Uh, some ways to frame audience needs and wants um, to kind of work that into your overall strategy, and kind of some questions to answer for yourself to measure uh, whether your project is successful. Uh, because if you don't measure it, it's hard to know. Uh, disclaimer. It's got con. There are a lot of folks who have like 87 different project management uh, certifications, with all the different things. I'm not going to talk about that stuff. Um, so this is not a specific methodology. This is just sort of a process that we learned over time. Hopefully, it was helpful for you. Um, you know, I'm not going to talk about every possible thing you can include in discovery. You know, discovery for a small project is very different than a large project. But I think these strategic questions are important for every single project. Um, and I'm, you know, cards on the table, I am looking at this from the perspective of uh, an external firm who works with clients, um, uh, generally in the form of web projects, or sometimes apps, stuff like that. So uh, you may find some things that are different for your own particular context. So, discovery, what is it? Um, so basically, it's part of the project where you really define or refine the scope of the project to figure out what it is that you're going to actually be doing. Um, I find a lot of times when you start off uh, a project, no one's on the same page about what that is, and it's important for the project's success to actually get on the same page. So that could be research to really figure out you know, what the real problems are that the project's trying to solve. Um, it could be uh, identifying project risks. Um, frequently, it's figuring out some sort of shared visions of what success looks like. Uh, I know that that can, in my role, often um, leadership's version of success versus the project management's, or project management's version of success versus you know the in-house communication team's version of success. They all look different. They need to be on the same page. Otherwise, the project is not going to be successful for everyone, and therefore, there will be problems later. Um, so, I think discovery is probably the most important part of any web project, because if 
you're not all on the same page at the beginning, the chances of you being all on the same page and happy at the end are very low. Um, so, what do you do discovery? Well, typically at the beginning, but that's not the only time you can do discovery. I actually find a lot of times when you've got kind of a notional project or um, a project that is maybe people are thinking that you should potentially do it or could it even be done, you can do like a mini discovery opportunity beforehand, right? And start to just figure it out. Can this even happen? And if it can happen, you know, what sort of resources can be allocated to it? So who to include in discovery? Um, not necessarily the more people the better, but you don't want to be too, uh, you don't want to be too small. Um, generally, it's best to have at least representatives of all aspects of the project team that will actually be working on the project to minimize uh, the game of telephone later on. Uh, it is no fun when the designer's like, oh, why don't we put this over here? It's like, well, we have like, we had like 14 meetings about this. It's really clear it needs to be over here instead. The designers in the conversation, then they understand about the context that they need in order to actually design something that works with the overall focus of the project. Um, it's important to have uh, key stakeholders, at least to have them involved. Um, and you should have at least someone who can make decisions about the scope of the project uh, because if you don't have anyone who has any decision making power, when you reach a fork in the road, you make choices, and there will be no one who can back up the choices that are made later on, which will be unpleasant. So, strategic alignment, what does that even mean? So, we tend to think about it, uh, my firm, like a website to be successful needs to solve some business problems. And so the important start is to think about what are the organization's goals this project is for? What are they trying to do? Not just what are they trying to do on their website, but really what would you say you do here? So that could be any number of things. It could be super high level, very broad. Um, some ideas, you know, it could be trying to enact some policy. If it's a, you know, a, a nonprofit, it could be trying to inform the public. And that's often important from a government perspective. Um, if you've got an association, you could be trying to increase membership. Um, or, you know, if it's a business, deliver some more services. Uh, anything else that uh, is not in my very short list that we have to throw out there? Yep. Redesign their website. Redesign the website to the yeah, Maybe. Like, I mean, a lot of times people come with that, but how are you going to, like, what does that actually do for the organization? I mean, that's almost an internal vanity project, right? Yes. All right, so that kind of takes it to the next step, right? Once you've identified what an organization is trying to do, what's preventing them from doing it, right? What are their obstacles? So. You know, sometimes it's like, hey, we're trying to get this message out there, we're trying to inform the public, we're trying to um, you know, enact some policy, change public opinion. Our message is super complicated, right? People don't understand what they don't understand. They don't understand why this is important, or they don't understand why our point of view is really relevant. Um, people could not know who the organization is, not who the business is. That's an obstacle, right? Um, could be competition from similar organizations. Maybe that's a reason why you might want to be more in line with a competitor, is maybe you think they're actually um, communicating better, but ultimately you probably want to have it more in the form of what's the organization trying to do, and like, hey, we're not communicating effectively. Well, that's a real obstacle, right? Not necessarily competitors, because you won't want to just do what they do, you want to do it better, right? Um, you know, I had a client, and kind of their obstacle was their value proposition was complicated because a lot of their potential clients didn't even understand that there could be a solution that would solve the problem. 
right? It was a public uh, publishing automation system, right? Very complex value proposition, right? That was their main obstacle. How do you make that straightforward? And how do you get people who don't even know how to answer the, ask the question, how do you get them on the site so they can get educated, right? So once you have your goals and your obstacles, how can a website contribute, right? The, the websites are wonderful, magical things, but they can't do all that much. So, you know, maybe you've got some explainer content. Uh, maybe you're just trying to get people to sign up or contact you. You're trying to direct people to a particular um, advocacy avenue or call to action. Um, but you want to think about what can the website do to move the needle towards the goals that you identified to overcome the obstacles that you have. Right? You know, if, if you kind of see it, it's kind of one follows on the other. Right? So, once we've had these sorts of conversations early in discovery, you can kind of rack them up. We do it in what we call strategic brief. And it really is, it's like those three sections. Um, and the reason it's important is as you go from discovery, further through discovery, as you get into actual planning and specification, as you get into design, as you get into development, everyone should be on the same page about what the goals are, what the obstacles are, and how the website's expected to contribute, right? So you're gonna to come to a fork in the road. Design's a common place where you're like, do we, what do we put above the fold? Well, once you've got some like, agreed upon overall goals and obstacles you're trying to overcome, then it starts to give clarity to how you should address that question, right? And, you know, you know there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer, but once you're looking at it through the frame of strategy, then it becomes clear, okay, we've agreed that this is our goal. We've agreed that these are our obstacles. Now we can actually make some choices and be aligned with the overall organizational strategy. Strategy. Now let's talk about some audiences. Um, you know, because having a, like it's it's kind of like the field of dreams sort of situation, right? If you build it, they will come, maybe. But you know, you need an audience to actually have a website be at all useful. So, who are your audiences, right? And I made that plural for a reason. Um, a lot of times, folks say, "Who is your audience?" And I don't know, maybe, maybe some of an organization only has one audience. But I think most of the time, you've got a bunch of different audiences. Some that will spring to mind, and some that will come to mind later after you think about it. So some stuff is very straightforward. Like, hey, this is you know, people in a particular industry, right? Maybe they're businesses, maybe um, they're professionals in the industry. Um, you know, one uh, client we're working with right now, one of their audiences is local government officials who are responsible for um, for uh, enacting um, efforts around the opioid supply. Right? It's a very specific audience. They have very specific audience. Audience might be the general public. Now, maybe that's your top audience. Maybe it's a secondary audience. A lot of times, folks won't think about kind of the secondary audiences, like maybe academic researchers, the media. Sometimes. Employees actually at your organization, and then this one might get to that uh, redesign to look like competitors. Sometimes you have internal stakeholders who have a lot of power over projects, and they are another important audience that you need to keep in mind. But if you want this to be overall successful, they might want to be relegated to the secondary audience category, not the primary audience category. We had a uh, project where. We were not able to get the important decision maker involved in the discovery process. So when we, the project manager had their opinion about what it was, they made their choices, we delivered the site, then, and only then was it taken to the, the decision maker who's like, well, you need to change all of these things. So the organization had to redo half of the work, which was very expensive for them, for no value other than someone not being involved who really needed to be involved in the thing. 
So once you identify who your audience is, how are they gonna get there? Right? You know, maybe maybe you've got an audience that is incentivized to get there because they know they need to do things. Local government officials are an example. They know they need to do this stuff. They want resources to help them do these things. They know where the website is, they will go and do the, the things. Um, if you've got someone where it's a, or an education component, hey, maybe uh, you need to think about the questions people will be asking, and maybe you'll need to create some content to kind of collect them through organic search. Maybe you've got an advertising budget you're going to do with like radio spots and you know, web ads and stuff like that. But you want to line up at least one pathway for each of your audiences of how you're going to get them to the site and what content is going to collect them once they are there. And as you're starting to think about that question, you want to think about what does your audience want from you? For each audience, right? If your audience is, uh, and this, you know, in transparency, this could not be what you want from them. It, in fact, could be diametrically opposed. You know, as an example, um, we had a, a client uh, as a uh, uh, the uh, association of uh, high school sports, right? So, if you think about the audiences that that client serves, right? That school administrators, it's coaches, it's referees, it's athletic directors, it's parents, it's students. And you know, think back to high school. How many of your athletic directors from high school or coaches were like super technically sad? Probably not that many, certainly not in my experience. And so what that audience wanted was they just want a phone number. They call someone and they can find out, all right, I need this form. Where is it? And that's not what the organization wanted. The organization didn't want people to be spending time on the site, on the, on the phone. They wanted people to be able to self-serve on the site. So, but, but understanding what people want from the organization, even if you're not going to give them that, helps you understand what you can give them to get them to do what you want, what the organization wants them to do. Right, so, you know, rather than 24 seven helpline, maybe you've got a very robust FAQ, and you, know, you give a little uh, contact form, I ask for the FAQ, don't see what you know. And here, ask us a question. And of course you need to make sure that you actually are going to respond to that, but that allows people to ask questions that aren't even there, feel valued, and then you build out your FAQ longer because you have another question you can answer. So, once you've got an idea of what your audience wants from you, what do you want from the audience, right? Chances are you want something, right? You've got goals you're trying to achieve, obstacles you're trying to overcome. You've identified audiences who ostensibly help your organization do this. So, for each audience, you need to know what it is that you want them to do, right? Often that is sign up for something, contact something, download a thing and share it with someone, read a thing and learn, right? But identifying what that is allows you to then build out what the site needs to do. So again, this is another part where we've got um, you know, the fancily named audience and task brief that we do internally. It doesn't have to be that. Some people use personas. But I think it's really helpful beyond just a persona to think about it from the perspective of how are we going to get these people on the site and what is our journey that we're going to have them do once they're on the site, right? Because if you think about it, if you've got someone who what they want is not what you're going to give them. You want to say, okay, well, how are we going to collect them? Great. And then we need to have some content when they land on the site that gets them to what we actually want them to do. Right? And again, once you've got this outlined, it makes it much easier to nail down what it is that the site is going to do, what content needs to be there, and you know, make decisions. 
So kind of the last big question is how are you going to measure success? So sometimes, sometimes you're lucky. Sometimes your website and your organizational KPIs line up. That's great if that happens. Usually the website is not able to move the needle sufficiently that anything that is measured on the website lines up with an organizational KPI. Right? Unfortunate, but true. But if it does, you need to identify that right up front. Because if, it, if you can measure the KPIs through the website, good for you. Um, but if you can't, you need to think a little more creatively. What actual website interactions influence organizational KPIs? Right? What the things that people do actually you know, incrementally move the needle? And at this point, if you've gone through goals, obstacles, what the website's going to do, and what each audience is going to do, you should start to think about this. Should be pretty, pretty obvious, and that there are pieces that drop into each of these slots. Right. So, once you've got some website interactions that can be measured, who's going to assess the project success? I mean, frequently, it is not actually the team that was involved in the project actually going through. A lot of times, it's someone else. So, knowing who that someone else is can make sure that you have the information in a form that that someone else will consume and actually get context and be able to accurately assess the success of the project. So, you know, that might be, hey, we've got a, the Marcom team they meet every week and they're going to be in the weeds. So when you're thinking about that, you're like, okay, well, maybe I need to have some reporting in place that allows for kind of weekly variations and stuff like that. Um, maybe there's Maybe leadership is pretty divorced from the website, and they only want a quarterly report. Well, okay, well then you can think about from a quarterly perspective, how a quarter over quarter, or a quarter over last year sort of situation. Um, or, you know, this is, this is a very tertiary website, and it's only going to be looked at once a year, so you need to make sure that you've got kind of a narrative that can tie into, you know, year over year, was this website actually useful? So identifying those metrics right up front lets you figure out, one, make sure they're actually going to be measured. Because if they're not measured, chances are, you know, once the site goes live, think about that quarterly or yearly thing, someone gets to that end of that fiscal year, they're like, okay, so did the website help? I don't know. Did you measure anything? So, um, if you think about that up front, then at least you can know what's there. One thing that's also you can also do, since you're doing this during discovery, is like, hey, you know what? We this website's replacing another website. That's awesome, right? We identify how we're going to measure success in the new website. Cool. Let's go ahead and start measuring this stuff on the old website because that way we have baseline. And in an extremely unlikely situation that we don't improve the baseline at least we have some data to know about. In a more likely situation, no one was measuring stuff to begin with, so if you start measuring things and you're here, and people expect you to be up here, if you've got, well, the baseline was down here, they are like, well, we, we're not here yet, but we made some improvements, so, you know, we're on the right track. So, you know, having this metric conversation right in the beginning, this lets you actually say, okay, let's get some baseline information, and then you can measure. And then you can also get your reports in place so you can actually get the right person to know what's actually happening. So that's kind of, uh, it's kind of the method, right? Goals to obstacles to audiences, what they want, what you want, to what you're going to measure, and how you need to report. Um, I think that you know, none of this is rocket science, but a lot of times I feel like some of these questions are skipped in discovery, because either folks are too close to something, 
or they're not thinking in this way. And then you end up with a project that may be fine, except it's not aligned with the organization. And that means it's not a good project for the organization because it's not doing what the organization is trying to do. And that's a, a recipe for a lot of harm later on because a lot of resources will have been wasted on this project from the organization's perspective. So, we make sure we've got a strategic alignment. We make sure that it aligns with your target audiences and you've got to make sure that you're actually measuring success. So, questions? Input, 
and they've been involved. Um, you might have, you're not going to get them in you know, your weekly meetings, and that's okay. But you've got to got to say, you don't want this. You you decision maker, you key person. You don't want to waste your time down the line. You don't want to waste months of your team's time. And, you know that you're paying for one way or the other. Then you've got to be involved at the front. So anyway, let's see your hand over here. Could 
uh, claim some real estate. And then, like, question about accessibility specialists, when you bring that? Oh, uh, so, uh, question B, um, accessibility uh, specialists, when would you bring them in? Um, so actually, uh, I don't know if you were, I was my second uh, session today, uh, and earlier we actually uh, did a code session with an accessibility team. Um, so we tend to bring them in the, during the design phase. Um, typically because right now, it's, it's, it's high level above um, above implementation and accessibility in a lot of ways is an implementation question and making sure that you are um, implementing things in an you know, uh, appropriate way for users of different abilities and who use different assistive technology. Right? So I we tend to bring them in during design, starting with wireframes, which you know frankly is like, well, I mean, it's gray boxes. But um, they can start to weigh in, well, you're going to need to consider this in this context, or you're going to need to consider this in this context. And then in design, hey, we've got a contrast issue here, let's let's nail that down before folks get really sold on that particular orange. Right? And then they really get into the weeds when you've got like an actual implemented like beta or something like that, like, hey, y'all did this form wrong. Get it right. Any other questions? Pre-discovery, someone has like an idea, just like here's a thing we can do. Should we assemble the whole team at that point? I mean, at that point, it seems like either you're going to do some pre-discovery and you're going to invest the resources and people's time in pre-discovery, or you should just write it down and then have everyone contribute some ideas and then start your pre-discovery process. And you got a bunch of ideas kind of on the on the table. Um, I do think that there is some danger to going with, here's an idea, let's get everything together about this idea, if you're not doing the strategic um, piece right there. Because a lot of times I think there are really good ideas, just generally also the idea, this maybe has some legs, but it doesn't align with what the organization is trying to do. It's maybe a little bit, maybe it's close, but it's not quite. And then you could easily waste a lot of time. I think that's, from a from a kind of mercenary firm's perspective, that doesn't happen that often. But I think in-house teams, that, that's a, a real danger, right? Because you can, I, I remember we ran across a, a project where a key decision maker effectively just threw a bunch of organizational resources at, at a little personal project that didn't go anywhere because it wasn't aligned with what the organization was trying to do and just wasted a significant amount of uh, Organizational resources at this boondock, basically. So, okay, question. Um, so, this seems how different is this from like ideas design? This seems like this is before that, right? Yeah, uh, so the question is how is this from like uh, design thinking and that sort of stuff? So, I think that this is like, I think this is before this time. Way before design. Like you need to know what like why is the organization doing this project and you need to write that down before you start doing any designs. Um, because otherwise you know, you're gonna end up in a situation of we have the, these designs and you know but what about this other thing that's super important that no one has thought of because we've been all kind of focused in on this a you know, very tight view of this project, where if we've identified, okay, the organization has these five goals. Oh wow, this goal right here, like donations, let's say, just to pick something, right? If donations are an important thing for the organization, 
that probably needs to be part of every single web project to some degree or another. And if you haven't had that enumerated anywhere, you know, and then this, this project, like the design goes up or like the, the, the site's live, and folks like, where's the donate button? You know, that's a great question. Where is the donate button? I think I am uh, we're probably at time. So uh, thank you all. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you've got questions, I'll be here.